Okay, the meeting of the Atlanta County Board of Freeholders is called to order in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlanta County Board of Chosen Freeholders was provided in the following manner. Published in the Press of Atlantic City, mailed to the Current, the Daily Journal, the Hamilton Gazette, and the Hamilton News. and has been posted on the bulletin boards in the county office building in Atlantic City the Stillwater Building in Northfield, and the County Clerk's Office in Mays Landing. Uh, I do want to ask for uh, a moment of silence. A member of our Veterans Advisory Board's mother, Marco Polo uh, Smigliani, had passed away uh, today, I was advised. If I could have just a moment of silence for him and his family, as well as his mother. Thank you. Almighty God, be thou our strength, our hope, our guide. Give purpose to our work, meaning to our struggle, and direction to our striving. Cause us to understand that only through human betterment, true fellowship, and deeds of kindness can we feel thy presence. Bring peace to our hearts and strengthen our desire to live in peace with all our fellow human beings. Amen. We have the flag salute. We all face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, will the clerk please read the purpose of this meeting, followed by title of resolution number 441. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to read the roll call first. Oh yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. I have a little echo. Okay. Uh, Bennett? Your phone's on mute. Here. I'm on mute. We need to put everybody else on mute. Okay. Bennett? Mm-hmm. Bennett? Here. Bertino? Here. Corsi? Here, present. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Gatto? Here. Risley? Here. And Kern? Here. Okay, now will the clerk read the purpose of this meeting followed by resolution number 441? Absolutely. The Thank you. Of, <laughs> the purpose of the special meeting is to consider and vote on a proposed resolution to authorize the Atlantic County Executive to enter into a lease agreement between Atlantic County and 5218 Property Limited Liability Corporation to lease a facility containing 11,800 square feet to accommodate the special needs of the Atlantic County Board of Elections in order to properly process the large amount of mail-in ballots that are anticipated for the November 3rd, 2020 general election. The election board suggests additional space is necessary to properly perform its duties due to the governor's recent executive order. Uh, resolution 441 reads, lease agreement with 5218 Property Limited Liability Corporation to occupy 11,800 square feet of office space located at 5218 Atlantic Avenue, Lakes Landing, New Jersey, for the special needs of the Atlantic County Board of Elections related to the November 3, 2020 general election in the amount of $47,365.50. May I have a motion? Thank you. Okay, uh, motion to made and second. Do we have any freeholder comments? Chair, uh, Ben Kim. Uh, why this was chosen and a little background. Okay. Um, Ms. Caterson, are you on? Okay, I think you need to un unmute. Okay. Okay, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? You are, yes. Okay. 
And what was Amy's question? I wasn't exactly sure. She was asking for, Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, she was asking for the background as to how this facility was selected. We've been working on finding a correct place to do this kind of ballot processing since the end of the primary, when many other counties in the state had recommended to us that the safest, most secure, most efficient way to process ballots was indeed one big room. I compare it to a process, and I'm not a car person, but if you've got an assembly line of cars doing ballot processing in different floors or different rooms is like taking a car and having welders put on a right fender and then taking the car on a cart down the hall to another room and having welders put on the other fender and then it's off in a cart and maybe welders put on the trunk. It's not an efficient process. We went out, and I don't want this in any way to sound negative, but we reached out to every public facility we could think of. And we were reaching out now, it's late July, early August. No one had any idea what the fall was gonna bring. So there are lots of schools we reached out to. And it's my opinion that if we had wanted a couple of weeks in August or September, they would have said fine, but we're saying we need it from the end of September into December. And the schools had no idea what they were gonna be doing and what their needs are, and they couldn't get the order or want to open and not have a cafeteria or not having a gymnasium. We did look at several private facilities, and this is the one we believe meets all our needs and to recount very quickly, sufficient space for between 40 and 60 workers at one time, um, working uh, in, in social distancing. They can't be all jammed together. Uh, it has free parking. It allows county workers to make uh, arrangements we need, and they've been fabulous. The county has been absolutely fabulous. And if there's a need through the processing, our county workers can go in. It's not like a facility that has their own staff and you have to use them. The parking is free. It's the third floor. I compare it to living on a cul-de-sac. The only people who drive in a cul-de-sac are the people who need to be there. The only people who are gonna be coming to the third floor of this building are the people who need to be there. And finally, it's only five minutes from the board office. If there's an issue, our staff here at the board office can be there in five minutes and back and, and those kind of things. So this is the only facility that met all those criteria. I know John Mooney is with me across the room John, are you able to be on to say anything? Have we been able to work that out? No. All right, Don is helping John get on. If you would allow it, Madam Chair. I John, I John, I I I I Go ahead, John, looks like you're ready to talk. All right, well, first of all, I, I want to thank the Freehold Board for having this emergency meeting. Uh, it's something that the board did not really felt that this was going to develop as big as, as a mail-in ballot. There's a lot of, you know, pros and cons on it. Uh, I'm for one person who felt that maybe we do not utilize our current assets, which are over 330 voting machines. Uh, but so be it, I want to thank the board for taking this measure. I think Lynn went over it. Uh, we both reviewed many sites uh, and took the time to go to various uh, shopping centers and various places to overlook plans. Uh, it's something that the board takes very highly. 
They went around and measured every office in our current building, uh, myself, to come up with the space. Uh, it's could it, be, could it work here? Yes. But is the space that it would work here if for 120,000 ballots coming in here would lead to more predictability of errors to take place? Uh, do we have errors during the primary election? Yes, we did. And hopefully we learn by them errors so that we don't have errors of that sort again. But once again, I think the board, I think administration uh, in the county has bent over backwards to work with us. Uh, this is a very costly affair for we, the taxpayers. Every one of you there are taxpayers. We're well over two two million. We're going. We probably will approach two point five million here in Atlanta County. That the, the you know the county, of course, a lot of it is going to be reimbursed. But as our county exec said, somebody's paying for it, and that's the taxpayers. But once again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mooney. Uh, do we have any other freeholder comments? Uh, Freehold Fitzpatrick, did I see your hand raised? No. No, I'm, I'm good. Um, Plenty okay. answered my questions. Okay, thank you. Thank do you. we have? I I do have two more, Chairwoman. Okay, Freeholder. I'm glad to hear that um, the space is on the third floor because I it sounds like that would help from a safety perspective um, in terms of cars not being able to drive into the building and try to. Um, in some way, potentially botch the election. Um, can you tell us about any other safety security precautions that are being taken um, to ensure that number one, it's secure around the clock, nobody's getting in there to tamper with any ballots, and number two, you know that um, what you can say from a security perspective about um, ensuring it doesn't come under attack. Um, you're right about the third floor. And the doors, again, the, the facility has been unbelievably accommodating. And I'm going to say again how great the county staff has been. Every door is going to be double locked, which means two keys, one D, one R, and no one can get in there without those two keys. The building itself is quite secure. Um, the IRS is on the first floor. So as an office building, it is incredibly secure, which was one of our main concerns. The other security is we have purchased carts and cages, for one of a better explanation, all of which are double locked. One Republican key, one Democratic key, and all ballot materials will be um I mean, security we also contact them to okay. review that site right john john is reminding me of of what else i need to say but back to the carts and the cages they're double locked one key d one key r you can't get to a ballot in the cage and the final thing john reminded me of is homeland security which is a which can, which we were connected with because of our close working arrangement mm -hmm with the Division of Elections, which is the state, and also the New Jersey Association of Election Officials. Homeland Security actually came down and checked out the security force and approved it all before we're coming to you with this request. We did all that homework. Thank you. I just wanted to have that on the record for the public. Um, and then just my final, it's more of just a comment. Uh, it's kind of tangential, but. I know uh, the board and actually the superintendent of elections, I think were recently awarded some pretty hefty um, grant funding that you all um, sought, uh, sought money on your own. Um, and I believe our clerk's office also applied for as well. So I just want to say thank you, number one, for applying. And uh, number two, hopefully we'll see it on our next agenda so that we can get it approved and get those funds in hand as quickly as possible. So thanks for your hard work on that and all the hard work that you're doing. Thanks, Madam Chair.
Thank you for your look at them. Do I have any other could, Madam Chair, could we give the amount just so it's on the record? Both the superintendent and the Board of Elections each got over $146,000 and it was a private grant. So yes, we taxpayers are paying for a lot of the election monies, which we're getting back in Atlanta County, which we'd be paying whether it was coming back or not. But this particular grant of 146,000 for the superintendent and the board is a private firm not paid by Atlantic County taxpayers. Thank you, Ms. Katterson. Yeah, I, you know, I understand that. I know some paperwork has gone into the, you know, the administration to put that information together for, you know, either one of the next two meetings, long as all the information for the resolution is there. Uh, but thank you for all your hard work, Mr. Mooney, as well. I mean, I know this has been quite a struggle for you know everyone involved, but thank you. You're doing a fabulous job. Do we have any other comments from any of the freeholders on this resolution? Uh, seeing none, do we have any comments from the public? Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Freeholder Corsi? Madam Chair, <laughs> is there any other location outside of Atlantic, uh, outside of the location in Mace Landing is going to be using to be used to count ballots. Uh, I got a call today from the executive director of the CRDA said that he thought someone requested to use the uh, convention center. I'd like to get some clarification. The, the one, the simple answer to your question, free order Corsi is no, this is the only place, but this is the moment I can say the convention center was very gracious and offered us space. The other criteria, as I've named, that we have in this building at the IRS was not really available at the convention center, which was over a half hour away from our board office. I have written to the gentleman who contacted us with the convention center and explained all this to him. And he said he absolutely understood and he would stand ready should any of our needs in the future, they would be happy to help. So we've thanked them profusely for their offer, but everything is going to be five minutes from the board office. Okay, thank you. Ms. Caterson, are you a trade? Yes, sir. I thought so, because most lawyers don't know when to stop, but thank you so much. <laughs> I thought that was freeholders who didn't know when. Uh, okay, do we have any other further comments from any freeholders or questions? Okay, again, uh, do we have any uh, comments or questions from the public, Madam Clark? You are on mute. No, we have no questions. Okay, roll call, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Isley? Yes. And for Mika. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Turn. A little longer that. hair. <laughs> yes. Turn. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. At this time, I need a motion uh, to open the public portion. We'll now open um, for public comment portion of the meeting on it. Uh, any topic, anyone that would like to speak, please type yes in the question and answer box. You'll be raised uh, from an attendee to a panelist in order to speak. Do we have anybody from the public? You are on mute. <laughs> oh, I. <laughs> oh, we don't have anybody. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for being here today. And thank you, Ms. Caterson and Mr. Mooney, very much for everything. Have a good evening.